Tom Verducci, who did such a great job on the interview of A.J. Hinch on the MLB Network. Nice enough to join us now. Tom, it's Michael Don, and Peter, how are you? Great. Thanks for having me, Mike. Um, you know, just, uh, I watched that, that interview with much interest, and, and I opened the show, Tom, with the answer that he gave when you asked about the buzzers. I mean, he could have said that's absolutely not true, and he leaned on the Major League Baseball, you know, he investigated and found nothing. I think that, to me, that tells me that there were buzzers involved. Is that the way you in interpret it? Uh, no, I can see why people go there, though, because I thought he was very forthcoming otherwise, and I think there was, you could see on his face on his, and in his words how authentic he was. Uh, no, I mean, listen, I, the reason I say that is because MLB did investigate that. As you know, more than 60 people were interviewed, more than 40,000 emails. Um, and the players walked in there. What MLB does when they interview people in an investigation, they say, listen, the only way you're getting get, get in trouble here is if you're not honest. And by all indications, they were honest with everything about that sign-stealing scandal in 17 and 18. So to believe that they were using buzzers, would mean that all players, and they did more than 20 of them, went in there and either they lied or MLB covered it up. What I think happened here is A.J. Hitch had a case of scandal fatigue. Remember, the whole thing started and was up and running for about two months before he even knew about it. So he wasn't part of the planning or the wasn't an active participant. Uh, he didn't get the memo from his general manager in September of 2017, putting every team on notice that from here on out, if you steal signs with technology, you're going to be hit with harsh penalties. And then the same week last week, he finds out that Jeff Luna, the GM, is running this program called Operation Codebreaker, in which his backroom guys are using technology in the scouting sense to get signs. He knew nothing about that. So, and then, after thinking they've been cleared with the buzzers because they will be investigated, I ask him, and it's like, come on, you know, I, I can't keep going down there. I don't know what I don't know. I do know we didn't do it, but I'm not going to go out on that limb. Now, if you want to make the leap and believe that there were buzzers used, that would mean that there's something horribly wrong with that investigation and that somehow the players either lied or have done an incredible job to cover that up. <laughs> And I don't think he would have known, Michael, because clearly he broke two televisions to let them know in 17 he wasn't down with all this science dealing stuff that was going on. So why would they even tell him if, in fact, something like that was going on? I, I get everything you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But here's my thing. He was forthright in every other question. And this one, he leans on the Major League Baseball investigator. He could have said, I have no knowledge whatsoever of using buzzers. And he didn't go down that, uh, that, that, uh, that hallway. So I'm just I'm curious why he didn't go down there. Yeah, again, I think it's scandal fatigue. He doesn't know what's coming around the next corner to what comes out. Uh, maybe somebody had a guy in a purple shirt in the right field stand. I don't know. He doesn't know. Uh, that's all I can read. But to say that you didn't like his answer, and now you're going to make the leap that in 2019, when there were so many protocols in place, that somehow they were using buzzers, and we didn't find out about that. I mean, that's an enormous but leap. So I, I just don't I see the leap being that, that big. I, 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 Tom, I just don't see the leap being that big. I mean, it, the, the, you don't find the, the Altuve post-game celebration thing to just be incredibly odd? No. Jose Altuve is like Derek Jeter. He's one of these hitters. If you tell him what's coming, he's going to swing at it. He's the kind of guy over the years has never wanted tonight. If you're on second base and you can pick up signs that you all know about, he doesn't want the signs. That, that dude in Houston who broke down, what, 8,000 different pitches, found that LT they had pitches or supposedly had pitches the least out of anybody. So, no, he had a home run earlier, and his wife didn't like him taking the shirt off. But, I, I really believe it's nothing like that. Uh, but, now, listen, I understand why all this stuff is in play. The Astros brought all of this on themselves. They have no right to complain if you or me or anybody says, well, I think there was more going on. But the problem but I, I guess I have... you got to show me evidence. You well, know, that's it. Well, the second investigation, the reason that I'm kind of dubious on the whole thing is because even if he found impropriety, what could he do to the players? Player right. Association I, will him do anything, so wouldn't it just be easier for him to say we found nothing rather than try to discipline Altuve and have the Players Association say no? Well, you make a good point because there, clearly there's a precedent set here that they are not going to discipline players. So, in other words, the same thing could happen in 2020 that happened in 17, where they were banging on a trash can, and the player knows he doesn't face any punishment. The responsibility is all on the front office and the manager. I mean, that, that's a whole different world. I get why they did it. 
I mean, it's almost impossible to go player by player, pitch by pitch, find out who used sides, who didn't. A lot of them on other teams now, do you sit them down? I mean, it's really hard to parse it all out. Sounds like a good idea until you actually try to do it. But also, this whole technology came about because MLB put in this challenge-based replay system with real-time video down by the dugout in 2017. It's their system. So they put their stewards, their caretakers, the general managers and, and managers and coaches in charge of maintaining the culture. And that was true when he sent that memo out in 17. That, pl- that memo was not sent to the Players Association. So I understand why he did it. You can't go back and now say, all right, players, I didn't warn you, but now I'm going to suspend you. Uh, this is what we have going forward. I know this. If I'm a manager now, i got a really tough job. <laughs> it's always been a tough job. But now in addition to actually running the game and who I've got on my bench, who the other team's got in the bullpen, et cetera, I have to know what all my backroom analysts are doing, what my players are doing, things they aren't telling me. I'm responsible for all of that in the course of a a three-and-a-half, four-hour game. That's a huge responsibility on managers, and the players know that they cannot be punished. Now, I've heard from somebody, let's say, in the know, Tom, that the reason that Hinch didn't stop it in 2017 was that Cora was such an incredibly overwhelming presence and the players just, like, worshipped at his altar that that was a fight that Hinch couldn't win. Does that ring true to you? I would agree with the first part. I mean, Alex Cora was hired in part because, you know, he has a lot of cachet with players. I mean, there's no question about that. He's the kind of coach that walks in not from, you know, class A ball or or some guru at a college, but with a really good major league resume and name recognition. And a lot of those players actually knew him personally before he was hired. So I, I think you're right on with his influence with players. But, you know, listen, I don't... It's not like A.J. Hinch and Alex Cora went way back. I, you know, if A.J. Hinch, I don't think that was the reason he didn't step in. I really don't. I, I think you're onto something with the, the, the cachet he had with players, but I don't think A.J. Hinch sat there and said, you know, I'd love to do something, but I'd have to cross Alex Cora to do that. I think it's more about the clubhouse in general. Remember, A.J. lost his job in Arizona first time around, first job even coaching, never mind managing. And really didn't, never really got the clubhouse in Arizona. And, you know, Bob Melman was the, was the manager before that. The players liked him. And the veterans there just didn't take to A.J. Hinch. And I, and I think, remember, he's not a world championship manager summer of 17. And, and I think he missed an opportunity to really put the hammer down. We talk a lot now about managing. What's, it's about connecting with players, right? Mm-hmm. I think he didn't want to risk his own personal connection with his clubhouse especially vis-a-vis his experience in Arizona. Now, he claims if it happened in 19, you know, he's been through a lot more, that he would do that. That's conjecture, but certainly in 17, he wasn't up to it. Now, I understand that Manfred's hands are tied having to deal with the Players Association, especially so close to the expiration of the CBA. But could he have gone to Tony Clark and said, listen, you've got a lot of your constituents who are upset about this. You've got to let us go after the players. The few have to fall for the many. You know, since nothing really happened to the players, we've seen a lot of players very upset. Now, we're coming from a biased perspective here in New York because a lot of people are up in arms. I'm not sure if they're talking about it all through Major League Baseball. But just like they did with the PEDs, working out a deal with the Players Association, could Manfred have tried to do that, at least open the door for him to discipline the players? Yeah, I don't think so. Well, I shouldn't say he should. He couldn't have. He could have. I think it would be extremely difficult. First of all, you know, you can't really get full cooperation in the investigation unless you gave the players immunity. I don't think they'd go in there and start singing if they knew they themselves were subject and, and incriminate themselves to what was going on there. That's one thing. Yes, the union also has the right to, to uh, file a grievance. Now, listen, if if something happens with a player, you don't discipline him because you're afraid of going to a grievance procedure. I mean, you do it because you think it's needed. Um, But, again, I mean, going back, how do you prove to what degree each individual player was a participant in this? It's a really, really hard thing to do. So, again, I think in theory it sounds great. It it does bother me that... (laughs) The players have done something and did not face punishment and will not face punishment going forward if they do the same thing. But I'm not sure I know the answer to how he could have gone about doing it in a very fair way. For This is the first time we've talked to you since he handed down these um, 
these punishments and, and what a lot of our callers, our listeners, and even us that we don't understand, why not vacate the title? Don't give it to the Dodgers. Why not just say they, they can't be rewarded for cheating? Now, I can't discipline the players, but I can take away the fact that they can't call themselves world champions. Why didn't he do that? Well, I mean, nothing like that, as you know, Michael, has ever been done in baseball. Mm -hmm. Where you, you know, you took an eraser to history and, and undid something. Um, so, I mean, first of all, there was no precedent for it. There was no precedent for suspending anybody for sign stealing. I mean, th this I thought was a harsher penalty than I think a lot of people expected going in, only because a lot, throughout history it's been treated with a wink and a nod. But I think because it is technology, and everybody's afraid, at least in baseball, what the future is going to be like as technology continues to get even better uh he needed to come down hard so you know listen the way i look at it michael is the 1951 giants they stole signs from center field with a you know a telescope and a buzzer you know we still talk about that team and remember what they did that's tainted that's never ever going around. 70 years from now we'll be talking about the 2017 astros that their championship was tainted because they stole signs that's a huge punishment. I mean, I get how a lot of people, especially if you're on the losing end, the Yankees, Dodgers, I get it. You'd, you'd want to officially take it away, but having baseball never having gone there, and I think the penalty of the loss of reputation in and of itself is huge. Yeah, just it worries me, Tom, because we can't be arrogant enough to believe that life isn't going to go on beyond our years, right? So, yeah, we're going to be talking about it. Our kids will be talking about it. But will their kids be talking about it? Will their kids' kids be talking about it? As long as that title stands there, the history can get blurred. If you take it away, then it can't get blurred. You'll have to investigate. Like the World Series that was taken away because of the influenza epidemic, you know, or, or the 1919 scandal, you know, that, that resonated. But is that remembered 100 years ago the way it was remembered by us when we were kids? I want to know 150 years from now. Whatever way that uh, our children's children will look things up, it could still get lost in history. Yeah, it's reverberating now, but a bunch of years from now, it's still going to say Astros won the 2017 World Series. History may not remember the scandal the way we do. I mean, that's a good point. And I do agree that, you know, time is the ultimate healer, right? And I see that now with Hall of Fame voting where people who were in middle school when the steroid era was raging, raging, are voting people in the Hall of Fame like it was no big deal. What was the big deal about it? Right. Well, it was a big deal, but you weren't there, but we're so far removed from it now that it doesn't seem as big as it was at the time. So you make a good point, but again, without precedent, I mean, I, that's a limb that Manford, there's no way he was going out there. I understand that. Uh, I don't know what it would take <laughs> for baseball to say, you won the World Series, but we're officially taking it away. Uh, but this is not it. I just, I, I, it, it just bothers me, Tom. It really does. I just, yeah, feel, I really feel as a baseball fan like something's going on, and and, and maybe you, listen, you're closer to it than I am, but like I'm a fan looking out there, and I just think they got away with it, and in every way, shape, or form, they got away with it. Yeah, jobs were lost, but the players, the owner, we're going five million dollars. Give me a break. I just, this is one of the largest scandals in the history of sports, and I, it feels like they it, got it, away with it. It bothers me a lot, too. Um, you know, listen, if you go to a ball game and you're not sure if it's being played on an even playing field, I mean, there's nothing worse. Am I right? I mean, you lose the integrity of the sport if you, there's doubt in your mind. And we're beyond doubt, obviously. We have proof that it happened. But you got to remember, too, in the summer of 17, while they're banging on a trash can, the Red Sox are stealing signs with an Apple Watch in the monitor. Are you telling me that summer when there was a camera in center field for all 30 teams, live feed for quote-unquote training purposes with monitors by the dugout, those are the only te two teams doing it? I, I have a hard time believing that. Now, if you get beyond September of 17 when everybody's worn, that's a different story. In other words, the Astros could have stopped at September 17 and faced nothing. Right. That's essentially what the, Astros, what the Red Sox faced. The fact that they continued after that is where this thing really got off the tracks. But that's why I'm saying I'm worried about the game going forward because we don't know where, where else technology is going, right? I don't want games decided by which team has the better cybersecurity department. You know, games are being played in the last few years with people in back rooms scouring over video and trying to figure out where the advantage lies. I don't want games decided by that. I want American, League, American Legion baseball. When the game starts, unplug. 
play on your own merits. Don't go back and look at the video room. You take an SAT test, you can't bring your laptop in there to look stuff up. You prepare for that test, and then you take the test. You know, I think baseball's got to be really careful here because what you said, I totally agree. It bothers me, Don, and I want to make sure there's more protocols out there to make sure nothing like this can happen again. Uh, I'll tell you what, the video room, it's an easily solvable thing, and I've been saying this for a couple of years, Tom. Challenge in real time. Enough about the best guy in there that could find the best angles. If your guy says he's safe, then challenge. You believe your guy, then challenge, because that's what the umpire has to make his decision. Because once you have that room so close to the dugout, it's so tempting to cheat. It's a great point. Uh, I think actually they do that in Japan. My other option, if you're not going there, why is that monitor downstairs? Why don't you put it in the press box like it is in the NFL? Call upstairs and let those dudes up there call down whether you should challenge or not. And that's it. Why, why do you have people who can be in uniform, who can be even near that monitor? So that's another thing that definitely needs to be addressed. Listen, this whole thing came about because they came up with a replay system. You know, it just proved too tempting to players. It's the law of unintended consequences that needs to be resolved. Now, Manfred promises there's going to be more protocols between now and opening day. He agrees there's too much real-time video down there. It probably includes, you know, broadcasts of games that are in the clubhouse. Uh, he realizes this is big, and, he, and I think the lessons of the steroid era, Mike, uh, really apply here as well. MLB was late to the party with addressing the steroid issue. When they did, they got there incrementally. So I think Manfred here is trying to be as responsive as quickly as he can and not get the penalties incrementally. I believe, and one, one final thing before we let you go, I believe that Hinch and Cora will manage again in the big leagues. Are you? <sighs> Well, I'll take the Hinch first. I, I do think he's going to be someone who will be in play after the World Series. I think he is, uh, there's no question, he'll have served his penalty. He's one of the better managers in the game. He was not an active participant. He has shown public contrition for it. All those are in his favor. Cora, we'll see what his suspension is. I mean, I'd be surprised if it wasn't more than one season because he was an active participant. I think in that case, he may have to, there may have to be a, a transition period where he comes back as a coach, instructor, you know, assistant, GM or something, and work his way back to a leadership position to jump back into that position after his first time in the dugout, which is what it was, his first job in the dugout. He was on the phone in the replay room in his first months of that season getting signs from the replay guys. It, that would scare me to just give him the keys to the car right away coming back. But I do think he's a, he's a good baseball guy. He's a good person. Uh, and he's young enough that I wouldn't rule out someday him coming back as well. And I don't think Lunau gets another job. Uh, probably true, Mike. Um, as you know, he, he's kind of an iconoclast. He does things his own way. He's not one of these guys who has a, a circle of tight friends around the game or are going to give him a soft landing spot to work his way back in the good graces. Um, so you're probably right. Um, you know, again, I, I go back. that The worst thing for me in that report is when the commissioner sent his memo out and it went to the front offices, and according to the report, Luno did not circulate the memo nor did he go downstairs and say to his coaches and manager, guys, are we in compliance with this? Because we better be. If either one of those things happen, we're not here today. I mean, that's a fireable offense, and I'm not sure if you're looking for someone in any kind of a leadership position that you can even look past that for a second chance. All right, Tom, thanks so much. We'll see you at the park. You got it, man. Thanks. All right.